Hello creatures, my name's Chloe. Today I'm bringing you a mini haul, a mini unboxing. I'm very, very excited about it. These are some books that I've wanted for quite a long time. I discussed them in a previous video, books I'd love to have in my collection, which I'll link up above. I'm super excited that I've got some of these and I want to talk about them. So yeah, that's what we're doing. I apologise for the rain. It's very, very loud. We're having a bit of a storm here, but I need to get this filming done. So I'm sorry about the noise in the background. I'm hoping that you can't hear it all that clearly. Before we get into the main content of the video, I'm going to talk about something that I'm planning on adding to all of my videos moving forward. While I don't have a huge audience on my various platforms, I do have some of an audience and hopefully we'll have more of an audience in the future. So I feel that it's important to be adding this content. In Australian culture, there is something called a welcome to country. It's a ceremony that's been performed by Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people for many thousands of years. And typically it is performed by the hosts and welcoming other people into their space. That is only done by the traditional owners of the land or Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people who've been given permission to do so by those owners. When we say traditional owners, we mean the group of people, the Aboriginal tribe, who were the original occupants of an area. However, there is an equivalent called the acknowledgement of country, which is done by anybody. And that is a means of showing respect to the traditional owners and recognising the connection to the land that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have and to the history of this country as a whole. I'm going to be adding an acknowledgement of country to all of my videos moving forward. I think it's something that's important for me to do. It's something that I've grown up being familiar with, though probably not as much as it should have been prevalent in my childhood. It's something that's mainly done, at least in my experience it was done, at school assemblies. It's quite often on the bottom of Australian government websites and some other Australian sites uh, and quite often at public events. I'm adding it here because I film on territory that was originally occupied by traditional owners and I want to make sure I'm recognising that. There are two versions of this you can do. There is a general version and a specific version. I'm going to be using the general version just in the interest of privacy and in the interest of not misidentifying the owners who I'm referring to, which is as follows. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. I would also like to pay my respects to elders past and present. If you're more interested in the acknowledgement of country or the welcome to country or the state of Indigenous race relations in Australia as a whole, I'm going to be leaving a link down below, which is where I look to make sure I was doing the right thing. That's what that is. So I'll be leaving that link down below. But now I'm going to be moving on to the actual unboxing section of this video. So the first book was not purchased by me, it was a gift from my boyfriend, which I very much appreciated, and that is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. Now, at first glance, this appears to just be the ordinary paperback edition. However, this is actually, you can see down here, the collector's first edition. This means that it has a piece of art in the front that is not in other editions. I was really, really pleased that I received this edition. I had thought I'd left it too late to get a collector's first edition, but I didn't, which was fantastic because I, uh, I kind of thought I was done with Cassandra Clare, to be honest. I thought that maybe I wasn't into that world anymore, but I've cracked. I am. I couldn't leave this out. I've also now bought Ghosts of the Shadow Market because I haven't read that either and I'm definitely going to be working my way back through all the Shadowhunter books in the near future. I'm hoping to do a couple of videos around these books but I have collector's first editions of some of her other books. I think I've got them for the entire Infernal Devices series so it was kind of nice to get this to sort of match that. So yeah this is kind of a little teaser one that I wasn't actually expecting to include in this video but yeah it's added to the collection. I'm very excited about it and it's just beautiful. This might be one of my favourite covers with the autumn leaves through her hair. I just think that's fantastic. And I must say, to be honest, I don't actually know as much about The Last Hours as I was expecting to. My friends and I have been waiting for these books since I was in high school. I'm now 22, so it's been roughly six, seven years, maybe even longer, that I've been excited about these books. So I didn't actually pay that much attention when stuff was being released. But now I'm very much looking forward to reading this, but first I need to catch up on my Cassandra Clares. So there's only two more books in this video, but 
I bought them on the same day and they actually ended up being shipped at basically the same time so I received them both really quickly and I'm very very excited about them. So the first one is the Owl Crate exclusive edition of Sorcery of Thorns. I'm sorry about the glare, this is filmed right in front of a window but yeah. So you can see this is still in its plastic wrap which is exactly what I want. I'm going to be unwrapping it now. I don't know if this has actually been opened before I bought it. I don't think it necessarily had. So we have the author letter, which is just printed on an ordinary edition of, or an ordinary version of the cover. And it just looks like that. And then we also have, which I didn't know was included in this, is a sticker, which is Magic Can Twist the Purest Hearts, which is a quote from the book. I really like this sticker actually. I think it's really cool. It's a nice shape and I really like Charlie Bolt Bolter. I'm not sure how to say her name. I've never heard it out loud but I really like that her art and I think that's a nice little sticker. I don't know what I'm going to be using it for. I'm probably just going to add it to my hoard of bookish merch. And then we have the book itself which is the beautiful purple edition. So on most editions as you might be able to see from this. Ah oh, it's so glary because the book's so shiny. But you can kind of see on here it's a little bit this one's a little bit darker than the actual book I think but generally the cover of this is green instead of purple. I know Fairy Loot also did a they still had a hardback edition but the cover was green and then they tinted the pages. This one obviously untinted but it's in very good condition like there's really no proper denting on the corners. There's maybe a little tiny bit of pushing on these front two corners but that's basically it. Oh, and there's a very, very tiny minor dent just there, but you can't even see it. It's fine. So there's no denting to either the top or bottom of the spine. Uh, there's a little bit of marking on one of the pages, so you can sort of see it. Oh, it's so bright. You can sort of see it there, just that little line there. There's some disruption in the pages, but I don't actually know what that's for. Ah, here we go. So I've just opened it to those pages, and you can see just there. Two of the corners have been dog-eared, but that would have been done in production. So it doesn't really matter, but I am going to just fold those back out. And hopefully over time, the book being pressed with them flat will let them sit a bit better. Yeah, so those marks, you can see both on the top and on the side. They're both from where it was folded and just disrupted it a little. Now, I haven't actually looked at one of these editions with no dust jacket on before. It's very nice. The dust jacket's in beautiful condition. I'm really pleased with that. So the naked cover, plain black, no embossing whatsoever, purple spine with the binding and then sorcery of thorns embossed on it. I really like that. Normally, well not normally, a lot of the time I've seen more plain script done on these embossed spines with the uh, author's name, but this is actually beautiful still. Really, really lovely book. There's no grease stains or anything on the front. There is a little spot. I don't even know if you can see half this stuff properly. You can sort of see it there. That's uh, glue spots from where the book has been put together because this section has been glued along the front. But again, so minor. It's actually ridiculous. I do nitpick in these videos, I'm well aware, but I like to go through the different aspects of the publishing process and why like books in absolutely perfect, undamaged, un, I don't even know what, unmarred condition are so rare. I don't think I have any, to be honest. Now, I, did, I forgot to do this straight away, but we've got the signature page. Now, I've not actually seen this recently. This is a different texture. This page is a different texture to the rest of them. It's shiny on one side and a little bit more matte on the other. And it's got the lovely vine embossing down the side. And that's been slotted in before the first title page just there which means like if I wanted to get this book double or even triple signed there is space to do so which I know some people like to do that again I have been really to a book signing I've been to a Margaret Atwood event but she didn't do any signing there and I know some people get their books personalised, which I just don't know how I feel about it yet because I've never been put in that position. I think I've got some books that I would really love to, but my collector's editions, I think I will keep purely with the signature. I think. I'm really not sure yet. Just because I... Uh, again, I buy books because I want to have them and I want them in my collection. But there are also an investment and if I ever get in financial difficulties and need to sell off books, I don't want a personalization to be a problem in that regard. 
So that is absolutely beautiful. I love this. This book was a five star read for me. I know there were people who didn't really like it that much, but I loved it, which is why I wanted this beautiful edition. Now I have to find space for it in my bookshelf. Oh, and if you want a better view, that's the spine. It's beautiful embossing on this. I didn't, I read this online, so I've never actually had a look properly at the detail. And it's that eye just there, that is also completely embossed, which is a really cool detail to add to the back of the book. Really nice tactile sensation, which I think is really cool. Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson is my second book. So this is one to be ticked off my books I'd love to collect list, which is exciting. Okay, now this one i'm so excited about this one it's actually ridiculous it is not a fairy loop book despite the fact that it came in a fairy loop bag i bought this from a private seller on ebay the same way i bought sorcery of thorns i found this the same day as sorcery of thorns and i spent a little bit of money on it just a smidge but when i hold it up i think you'll see why i had to the gathering dark by lee bardugo i'm this is so so huge for me this i said i literally said the day i filmed the video talking about all the books that i wanted to have in my collection i found sorcery of thorns and the gathering dark online on ebay and i had said in that video i was never going to find the gathering dark and then i found it straight away which look i was not expecting that at all i had no idea that was going to happen but i had to snatch this up right away this is the most this is the most money i've ever spent on a book I'm not going to be revealing how much here because at some stage I want to go through my collection and back through all my receipts and actually tally up how much my special editions have cost me because I know it's a lot. But this is the most expensive single book I have ever bought and it was so worth it. This is an ex-library copy which I'm sure it was on the listing but I might not have paid as much attention to the listing as I probably should have. I don't care though because like as far as I'm concerned this book is so rare it's really, really unlikely that I would have ever found this as a non-library edition. Lynn Hermione posted on my most recent YouTube video. She's an absolutely lovely UK bookstagrammer. I would highly recommend going and checking her out on Instagram. She's so nice. Please go and check her out. She commented on my uh, collection video that she had only come across these editions in UK libraries, which is really interesting to me. So this is the UK edition of Lee Bardugo's Shadow and Bone, highly limited. I don't think there were that many copies of it printed, but I don't have specific numbers on that. If you do know specific numbers on The Gathering Dark, I'd be so interested. It's fully encased in the plastic wrap. It wraps around and it's taped in place to the cover. So, and because this isn't, covered you can actually feel the texture of the front which I must say I wasn't expecting it to be quite so shiny it's not a floppy paperback it's quite stiff and then we've got the borrowing page just there so this came from the Lancashire Library and it was last borrowed in May of 2017 the earliest is from April 2013 it's been stamped seven times I don't know if that's a lot and it's been glued in directly. I don't know if you can see it through here. You can just make it out, I hope. The Gathering Dark is underneath there, but I don't know if I'll be able to actually remove that without stripping the page. Like, I'm by far not an expert in restoring books. I think I'm going to probably give it a go because I really love to get this out of the plastic wrap and actually feel it. Plus, the plastic wrap is grimy as, and I'm pretty sure some of it would be on the actual cover of the book because it's not... It's not sealed, like I can lift it up there and get my fingers underneath it. Very, very shiny cover. And it is fairly clean, like if I lift it away and see that, like I don't think you can see properly what I'm doing, but most of the marks seem to be on the plastic, which is what I wanted. There are some small pen marks down there, just on the bottom. So some green, a little bit of blue just on that corner. No big deal. There is a little bit of black. It'll fade with time. That's fine. It's also got a sticker on the inside cover just here and a stamp. The stamp I obviously can't do anything about, but that's fine. Pages are all fairly clean as far as I can see. I'm really, really pleased with this. Like it's got some wear and tear, but for a library book, it's in great condition and it means I have it. I didn't want this book in perfect condition. I just wanted this book which I have. It's been protected. I will probably try and do a little bit of restoration work on this, even if it's just extracting it from the plastic. 
like I'll probably film the process and if I have enough footage then I will get into it and I'll do some more research on maybe removing pen marks or trying to remove things like that. Just looking into more book restoration because I do have a little bit of work to do on a couple of books now including this one so that should be really fun. So yeah these are my new collector's editions, new special editions that I'm super excited to have added to my collection. I hope you enjoyed this video. I was expecting to have to wait and have my ultimate books take a little bit longer to find than just getting The Gathering Dark straight away. Like, not expecting that at all, but I'm not mad about it either. So yeah, these are my new editions. I should be filming another one of these unboxings pretty soon because I may have made another purchase since these arrived, but yeah. So there will be another video, one of these videos coming in the near future. I hope you really enjoyed this one. Let me know down in the comments below what books you're hunting for. What are your holy grails? How do you get your books? Any recommendations for me for restoring this library book would be absolutely fantastic. So that is it from me. All my social media links are down in the description box below. Follow me on Goodreads if you want to know what I'm reading as I'm reading it. I'm really active on Twitter, so if you want to have a chat to me, find me over there. And you can also find me on Instagram under the same username. All those links are down in the description box below. Subscribe if you want to, like it if you did, and I will see you soon in a new video.